Listen to the above. The International Center for Eye Care Education selected the department as partners in its first vision center project in the sub-region for a project called the Ashanti Vision Center, which is a collaborative effort between the International Center for Eye Care Education, the Idriasi Community, and the KNUST. The Vision Center, which is located in the Idriasi Community, was commissioned on Friday, the 28th of May, 2010, following the signing of a memorandum of understanding to provide accessible and affordable eye care services to the public, especially those within the proximity of the university. The Department of Biochemistry and Biotechnology, as well as Food Science and Technology, benefited from a donation of assorted modern laboratory and office equipment from the Plant Sciences Group of Wageningen University and Research Center. The equipment is valued at 400,000 US dollars and was made possible through a memorandum of understanding that was signed between the College of Science and the Plant Sciences Group of Wageningen University and Research Center in the Netherlands in 2009 to establish a working relation in the areas of laboratory and equipment transfer, joint research and publication, joint training for students, and an exchange program for students, faculty, and staff members. The Department of Environment, Environmental Science also received an amount of 10,000 euros from the World University Service through its workplace educational equipment subsidy for the purchase of office and laboratory equipment. This will undoubtedly help the department to solve some of its teething problems. Several institutions, such as the Ramapo College of New Jersey, the Alumni Association of Lancaster University in the United Kingdom, the Trade and Investment Program for a Competitive Export Economy, as well as individuals such as Dr. Joris Ni Emisa, Professor S.C. E. Adunya, Professor and Mrs. Yao Debra also made several donations of books, laboratory equipment, and cash to the faculty in the course of the year. In addition to the above, Mr. George Kojo Nei Aka, Anda, I'm sorry, Mr. George Kojo Nei Anda, the MTN marketing manager and alum alumnus of the Faculty of Biosciences and his spouse donated an amount of 5 thousand US dollars to the college for the institution of an endowment fund in their name as a sign of appreciation to the Department of Biochemistry and Biotechno Biotechnology in particular and the university in general. The fund would cater for needy but brilliant students and the modalities for the administration of the fund is currently being discussed by the college. The university is most grateful to all these institutions and individuals for their kind support. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm also proud to announce that Professor Per Jogofia, who, as I said earlier on, is the first female professor of the university to have delivered a professorial inaugural lecture, has also instituted an award for the best final year student in enzymology in the Department of Biochemistry and Biotechnology. This is in recognition of the impact the department has made on her life during her undergraduate and postgraduate studies as well as during her years as a lecturer in the faculty. Once again, Professor Jogofia, congratulations and thanks for the award. <laughs> During the past academic year, the Department of Optometry and Visual Science organized its second oath swearing ceremony for newly qualified optometrists and visual scientists on Saturday, 27th March, 2010, right here in the Great Hall, during which ceremony 32 students from the KNUSC and another five from the University of Cape Coast were presented for induction. On income generation for the faculty, the university's 13-acre botanic garden, which provides grants for the university's community retreats and socializing activities, as well as serve as a resource site for practical lessons in ecology, plant physiology, agroforestry and conservation is currently being managed by the Faculty of Biosciences Department of Theoretical and Applied Biology. The faculty also runs the popular clinical analysis laboratory, which conducts various types of clinical analysis for the university community 
and the general public at large. At this juncture, please permit me to also say a word or two about our Institute of Distance Learning. Over the years, there have been calls from several quarters for a drastic increase in the intake of our students at both the undergraduate and postgraduate levels to ensure that as many as possible graduates are produced to execute the country's development agenda. The above notwithstanding, we have over the years not been able to operate at our optimum, partly on account of problems such as rundown infrastructure, inadequate lecture theaters and studios, inadequate academic staff, and outmoded laboratory equipment. For us to be able to surmount the above problems, a couple of years ago, the university restructured our then Faculty of Distance Learning into a complete institute with several departments. We saw distance education as a powerful and growing force in our attempt to provide a bigger platform for accessibility for students. So far, I'm happy to inform you that there are seven regional centers for our Institute of Distance Learning, offering several undergraduate and postgraduate programs. And effective next year, there will be an eighth center in Cape Coast to cater for the central region. Gradually, the Institute of Distance Learning is beginning to play its proper role as anticipated. From a small number of 16 students in 1998, it now has a total student population of 2,575, and its programs are very much patronized, especially the Commonwealth of Learning's MBA and the MPA programs. Our Institute of Distance Learning undergraduate programs are also gradually becoming popular with the introduction of a limited number of liberal arts programs such as sociology and social work. In addition to the above, it is also anticipated that the Institute of Distance Learning will now become the center to coordinate all part-time, top-up, and all other special programs on offer in the university. Indeed, the Institute for Distance Learning has begun performing this important role by hosting the top-up programs in administration, as well as computer, electrical, and telecommunications engineering. We are all, we are all overwhelmed by the level of patronage these two programs received which gives us an indication of the potential demand for which topping up programs will be needed. It is our hope that the departments of civil engineering and mechanical engineering will soon commence their top up programs for our certificates and diploma holders. It is my expectation that in the very near future, every faculty will have programs on offer via the distance learning mode. The Institute's intention to develop our old guest house at Ridge in Accra into the nucleus of our Accra campus is also on track. And now, something about the graduating class. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, permit me to say a few words about the kind of students we are graduating this afternoon. In all, the Institute of Distance Learning is graduating 40 undergraduate students from all the seven regional centers. 13 of these students obtain second class upper division degrees. 25 obtain second class lower division degrees. And two obtain pass degrees. The Faculty of Biosciences is also presenting 282 students for graduation this afternoon. Out of the graduating class, 20 students, which is about 7%, obtain first class degrees. 127 students, which represents 45%, obtain second class upper division degrees. 69 students, representing 25%, obtain second class lower division degrees. And the remaining 66, which is 23%, obtain pass degrees. The distribution is therefore a little skewed towards the first and second class upper division degrees, implying that the graduate's performance was above average. 